Kia year 11 and 12. I'm going to video some of the questions from yesterday's level 2 algebra and calc exam. So I know that most of the people watching this will be next year's level 2 students. I think probably most of you who did the exam yesterday found it pretty tough and the last thing you want to be doing is um, looking at the questions again. But some of you have asked me so here we go. The first one I'm going to do is question 2e where we're told of from algebra we're told that one root of the equation blah 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 is equal is n times the other root. Okay, so we've got a quadratic here, and we've told one root is n times the other, and n is not equal to zero. And we have to show that this is equal to zero. So sometimes in a show that question, you start working um, with the left hand side and you walk to work towards the other. But that's not really the way to approach this one. Let's start by what do we know if one root of the equation is n times the other? So we're going to let The roots be um, alpha and we're going to make this the big one and we're going to make the other one alpha divided by n. Now it's completely fine instead of doing it that way to make them alpha and n alpha and you can do that and you'll get to the same place as me. This is just how I happened to start this one off. If you've learned about the sum and the product of the roots, I think you could probably use that method here. But I started more simply and I said, well, if we know that they are the two roots, then we can factorize our quadratic. And we know that our factorized quadratic will be the same as our expanded quadratic. So this is how I started off. I said, well, x plus alpha times x, whoops, let's just get rid of that. Right, so x plus alpha times x plus alpha over n is equal to 0. But we also know that x squared plus px plus q is equal to 0. So what I'm going to do now is to expand this out and then collect up all the stuff and I'm going to match up my coefficients. So the first step here is to expand. So when I expand I get x squared plus alpha x plus alpha over n x plus alpha squared over n and that equals zero. Right, but because we know that this is equal to zero and so is this, then we're going to match things up. Right, so p is the coefficient on x, we're going to match that up with the coefficient on x here. And q is the constant in here, so it's going to be the same as the constant here. But I need to clean this bit up here first. So I get x squared plus x times alpha plus alpha over n plus alpha squared over n is equal to 0. So now we're matching up our coefficients. So this p here is equal to this thing here. And q is equal to this. So p is equal to alpha plus alpha over n, and q is equal to alpha squared over n. Now let's go back to the question and look at what use that all is. Well, where I'm trying to get to is I want to show that this thing here is true, and that hasn't got any alphas or anything in it. So what do I do next? Well I'm going to try and basically eliminate out the alpha. Here we've got p is equal to alpha times n, plus alpha over n. So np is equal to alpha plus alpha n, which gives me alpha into 1 plus n. So solving that for alpha, I'm going to get np over 1 plus n. And you might go, well, how did I know to do that? Well, I want to um, have a thing in the end that's got no alphas in it. And I can get alpha equal to something from this equation. And then I can get alpha equal to something from this equation. Or actually here, I'm going to get alpha squared. right? So on this side, we get alpha squared is equal to qn. So I can't quite say that these two things are equal. But here I've got alpha squared is qn. And here I've got alpha is something. So if I take this one and square it, so if I take alpha, this one here, and square it, 
then it's going to be the same as Qn. And you can see that I'm going to have no alpha stuff left. And I'm going to have Q, N, and P in there. So it's looking quite promising. So let's square this one. I get alpha squared is equal to this. So that's equal to N squared, P squared, over 1 plus N squared. From up here, alpha squared is equal to Qn. So I can set those two things equal to each other. And now we're just about there. So let's just write out what we need to find. So we need to show that Qn squared plus n times 2q minus p squared plus q is equal to 0. So I can see a q sitting here. I'm going to multiply both sides by this so that I don't have a fraction and just see what happens. Well, we're going to have n squared p squared is equal to qn times 1 plus n squared. And here I've got n squared here, and I've got n here. So I can divide by n, and I can do that because I know n is not equal to 0. That leaves me with this. n p squared is equal to q times 1 plus n squared. So n p squared is equal to q times 1 plus 2n plus n squared, and I'm nearly there now. Expanding this side, I get q plus 2nq plus n squared q, and over here I've still got np squared. So let's subtract this from both sides, because I'm heading to having something equal to 0. So I've got 0 equals q plus 2nq plus n squared q minus np squared. So let's look at what we had to show and how far off we are. Well, we want to have qn squared, so we've got that here. And then we want to have n times something. So look at these terms here. I've got n times 2q minus p squared plus q. And that's it, we're done. So we've shown the thing we had to show. I've got to say, I think that's a pretty tough question for level 2. Um, but when you try and look at it calmly, the key idea in there is that we know that if things are roots of an equation, then they help us factorize it, right? So if you go back to that idea that if the roots of something are, say, 2 and 3, then that means that my quadratic looks like this. Yeah. And it's just that in a harder version where the roots are alpha and alpha over n. I'm sure there are smarter ways to do this question, but that's the way I did it. Um, and I know that it probably will be easier um, algebra if you use n alpha. But I just um, wanted to show you how I did it, the sort of the first go that I did at it. Thanks for watching. Um, and feel free to leave any comments. I'll do some of the other tricky questions in the next day or two.